Today we're going to get started with React, and that means we're going to need to set up some stuff that hasn't been set up in previous tutorials for us, and that is going to be most notably Node.js. This is what most modern front-end tooling is based off of because it's JavaScript, so that kind of makes sense. So in order for you to go along with this tutorial, you're going to need to have the newest version of Node, or probably the newest version of Node installed. That'll also install NPM so we can install packages. And then once that's done, then you can continue following along and you'll be able to install some packages and get up and running with React. Now, just before we get started to go over React a little bit, uh, React is a JavaScript framework that is based on user interfaces. So it's really the view portion uh, of what you would consider like MVC. And that's pretty cool. It does some interesting things where it essentially just takes the state of the world and then utilizes that in order to re-render itself. So if you change the state, React will automatically re-render very, very quickly. And it'll appear like things are kind of happening simultaneously if you're mo modifying the state. And this is probably the most popular uh, front-end web framework right now. It's the one that kind of has won. And it's used by a lot of different things. So Facebook uses it, Instagram uses it, and Facebook being the ones who created React. But then other things use this too. So uh, Wonderlist is now to do uh, by Microsoft. I was looking at their code the other day, and they also are using React. So lots of different things use React, and it's a pretty neat framework. Over in your browser, you have to make sure that you have access to NPM. So just NPM-V will give you uh, whatever your version is. So make sure it's uh, relatively high. Um, and then you're going to need to install create-react-app. And this is an odd name for a command line utility. I already have this installed, so it should be pretty quick for me. But um, the long story short is this is a library that the React team has released to make it easy to bootstrap a new React application. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So our application is going to be kind of an interesting one. Um, we're going to be creating a almost entirely client-side application that's going to take notation for doing chord charts for music, like guitar players use chord charts. It's a, it's a pretty common thing. And uh, output those in a good way. So there's a format for this called Chord Pro, and that's how people kind of share these things. And then you can render Chord Pro to where the chord notation is in the right spot on right syllables. So there will be some interesting front-end interactions. So this is the application we're going to build. So for right now, what we're going to do is just do create React app. And then we're going to call this chords. Not a very creative name, but it'll work. Like it says here, this can take some time. It has to install a few different packages for us. And it's going to set up quite a few different things. It's going to set up our index.html that we use to kind of bootstrap the application. Then just to go over what's there, uh, you're going to find the, the first component, which we're going to strip away, but we're going to look at why it works, called app. And then that component is utilized in the index.js, which is kind of the root of our application. OK, it's finished. So. If you're unfamiliar with using Node and NPM, NPM, in addition to being a package manager, is also used as a task runner in a lot of situations. So the way that Create React app works is that it built a package.json for us that came pre-fitted with some NPM commands. So NPM test will run some automated tests, which there's actually one that's already going to be there, which is kind of neat. NPM start is going to start our server for us in development, which is going to do some pretty cool stuff for us too, because there's a lot of complicated things that go into front-end tooling nowadays. Um, and this is really going to help us out a lot. So we're just going to follow what it says to do here. So we will CD into chords, and then we will run npm start. And you'll notice that it just booted my uh, browser back up and rendered out this page. So it even tells you where to go. So we're going to go into source app.js. Back in our terminal, we're going to leave this running because it's actually going to watch our code constantly and do what it needs to do based on that. And then we're going to open up a new terminal, um, or in my case, a new terminal, I guess. And that will be for us to actually do our editing here. So we were going to go in source, and it's app with a capital A-J-S. And this is the component that's rendering out. And if you're just looking at this right now and you haven't messed around with JavaScript in a while, there's a lot of stuff that's going to seem really weird. Um, class is a concept from ECMAScript 6 that we're going to be utilizing quite a bit. And then these import statements are kind of new too. So uh, just follow along and it'll all make sense kind of in a moment. But what we're doing up here is we're importing the React object 
and then also a subcomponent from within the React library called component. And then we're also, this is a little bit weird here, that we're importing an SVG file and a CSS file. And that what this allows you to do is you can define your styles and your some of your images that you're going to utilize, and you can kind of package them along with your the code that utilizes them. So your components can be very self-contained. Continuing down, we're going to create a class of app that is a component, extends, uh, is kind of like inheritance in a lot of languages. And then down here, this render here, this is us defining a method. So components, by default, they only need one thing. They need a render method. And that's what this is defining. Down here, things get a little wacky once again. And it looks like we have HTML inside of our JavaScript file. But what this is, is actually called JSX. And it's a kind of shorthand notation that we can use that is going to be pass through a compiler and this is going to turn into like this div class here is actually going to turn into react.create element div and then some extra stuff here um, so it's it's all going to this html which is jsx is going to turn into javascript code uh, there are some weird things going on here, though. Um, so, for instance, class name is not just class like it would normally be in HTML, and that's because class, uh, like you see on line 5, is a keyword in JavaScript. So that couldn't work. Um, that's the main kind of gotcha that we're going to run into with JSX here. Uh, the other thing is you can only return one element in JSX. So you'll notice that if I come down here and I put an H3 like hello here, and I save this, and we go back over here, it'll tell me that we got a syntax error in our JSX. And it, thankfully, it tells you a pretty good error message here. Adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. So what that means is every component has to be one tag that can then contain a ton of tags. So if I, if I take this and I move it in here, and I save this, and I come back over, you'll notice that we're fine. And actually, if I come back over, we have uh, the auto-reloading comes into play too, and we even rendered that here. So we don't really want this particular thing. So let's clean this up a little bit and we'll do the obligatory hello world. For this, we're just gonna create a h1. Gonna say hello world, close that. And then we will clean up this stuff too because we don't need those. We save, look back at this, no errors. And we come back to our page and you'll see hello world here. So we've just created our first component and kind of had a rundown of what's going on with the, the bare bones simplest of components. And before we're finished with this, because we're just sort of bootstrapping the application, let's go and take a look at how this stuff all gets wired together. I said earlier that we were going to have an index.html. And there's quite a few, you know, little things here. But um, basically, we need to have JavaScript for this particular application. And there's just one div. Not very, not very fancy. Not a whole lot going on here. The real magic happens in index.js. So in here, uh, if we look down here, React DOM is another library that React provides us with. We import our own component here, and then this service worker uh, bit is there by default. And we're just going to keep this here for right now, but this is for making uh, progressive web apps, which we haven't talked about before, but um, it's, it's pretty neat, and we'll eventually cover it. We don't need this index.css necessarily, so we'll just delete that for right now. And then right here you see React DOM render, and then there's some more JSX here. So remember, behind the scenes, this would turn into react.create element, and then it would flush itself out to be everything that was inside the apps render method. We're using the normal, no jQuery here, uh, document get element by ID, root, and this is how we grab the area that we're going to then substitute in our components. And that's all that's happening here. So we'll save this since we made some modifications. And now before we finish, let's quit out of this and we will just remove some things that we don't need. So we don't need the logo. We don't need the index.css. We don't need the app.css. So we'll just remove all of those. I do briefly want to go over the package.json. So let's open that up. And we only have two dependencies right now. We have React and React DOM, which we know that we need both of those, and we will always need both of those for this particular application. Scripts, this is how you define the npm start, npm build, et cetera, et cetera. So these were predefined for us, and they use React scripts, which is our development dependency. So it's pretty simple right now, and we'll add some stuff to this later on as we continue to work through the application. 
That's where we're going to stop for today. We've created our React app skeleton and kind of figured out what's going on behind the scenes here. And in our next tutorial, we will continue and actually flush out some real logic related to our app that's going to work with chord charts. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a comment down below telling me why you liked it and what you're going to do with this knowledge. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more of these tutorials each week. And also don't forget to join us on Patreon, Facebook, Slack, so you can keep the chat going, and on Twitter. But as always, have a nice week.